Hey Axis and Allies players, the good captain here. Welcome to episode 5 in my Axis and Allies clinic series. This video I would categorize as a customizations video. I've enhanced and upgraded many versions of Axis and Allies that I own, and I recently did this to my version of D-Day. And when I watch the videos of other customizers, I realized I do a few things that are a little bit different, and so I decided to share a few of the tips, tricks, and techniques that I use when I upgrade my versions. So in this video, I'm gonna share a few of those techniques with you. The first is mold line removal. I'll show you what it is and how I do it. The second is what I believe to be the most important. I use a different technique when I'm actually spraying my pieces. So I'm gonna show you how to build a rather simple and cheap tool that should help you improve the quality of your paint job when you're spraying your pieces. And lastly, I demonstrate how I do my version of dry brushing. This video concludes with a series of photos of the final product. I've timestamped these three techniques in the description box below, so if you don't wanna see one of them, that's where you'd go to skip. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll episode five. So the first step in my process is to remove this mold line. Every out of the box Axis and Allies piece, insofar as I know, has these things. And if you can see it, it's this line running right down the middle of the, in this case, uh, armor unit for the German side at a D-Day, Axis and Allies D-Day. So it starts from the back to the top across the turret. Um, it might be more visible here too, here at the front of the tank. Yeah, you can see that, that line here. And across the bottom, there's this line. And in the rear, right there. Okay. We need to take that off. I don't like that. It looks ugly. And when we're going to take the dry brush to it, it's, it's really going to catch and be noticed. So... I start by uh, just taking the sanding twigs and uh, I'll link this in the description box, but different colors are different grains. I start with the biggest grain of sanding stick. That's this uh, brown one and then I move to blue and then I use orange or yellow as the finest one, almost like a polish. So this first one, we're removing a ton of plastic when we do this. It's just it's really getting after the, getting after it. And um, I start with the bottom because it's just the easiest. And you know, these quick strokes are sort of the, the fastest way to get it done. And I'm just evenly moving up and down the piece. And you can see the indentation there. That's a little bit of a depression. We kind of want to keep going until it disappears. Uh, that dark spot kind of needs to fade away. So we'll just keep evenly moving across it, back and forth, side to side, up and down. Okay. And then uh, uh, I'll do the tracks here. Okay. Again, just, I'm really after the mold line, but I'm I'm okay to just hit the whole piece. We're, we're pulling off a very fine amount of plastic, uh, just enough to remove the mold line. As soon as we see it disappear, as in this case, uh, you can really see that it's gone now on this rear tracks portion of this German tank. Uh, that mold line pretty much gone. I guess you can still see a little indentation. Hit it one more time. And then when you get to these, uh, this fold and I'm not going to do the whole piece uh, on this video, but I'll show you some of the techniques. So now I turn this thing sideways and uh, you know, just line it up. I'm sorry. So I'm lining this sanding stick up here and just sort of going to town on it. So this is uh this will test your patience for sure, but I, I like this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I just sort of tap away. It, it does get a little difficult sometimes. So like this indentation here, I gotta, gotta move the piece a little bit. And I'm just using the same strategy every time. I kind of keep sanding at it until I see that dark spot, the dark spots sort of go away and all I'm left with is a, 
a sanded portion, uh, you know, the white scarred sanded portion. So we're just about halfway done with this piece now. Bye bye mold line. So I'm not going to do the whole piece. Uh, I think the idea has gotten at this point, but um, the back deck of the tank has lots of little details on there. So we, you know, I'm using, I'm essentially leaning this in to get to dig into this little corner here, right? That's like a, like it's been shelved out a little bit, like a half, little half pipe on the back here of this tank. It's got that mold line running right down the back deck and you can really see it when you scratch at it a bit, right? Look at that. When you scratch at it, it turns bright white practically. And when you paint, especially when you dry brush, the thing just, it just pops out like a sore thumb. That's why they need to go away. Once we get it to a point where we've gotten most, if not all of the mold line off, we can move to a different color. And in this case, I'm gonna use blue. And the point of this is it's a mid grade before we get to the polishing stick. And what we're doing is just basically smoothing out the scarring. In this way, we're gonna slowly bring it back to a fine, smooth plastic piece that doesn't look like it was ever sanded on in the first place. I'm using corners and edges and angles. And mine is a practice hand. You should take your time if you're doing this the first time. And then the last color is the orange or yellow sticks. Again, these will be linked in the description box below. The trick here, or what we're trying to do with this uh, polishing twig is basically uh, get it so that when we primer and paint it, it, it never appears that it was sanded. We just want it to look like a, a nice solid piece. And the very, very last thing I do after I run the polish over it, or the polishing stick over it, take a Q-tip, put a tiny dab of saliva at the end of it. This is weird, but what we're doing here is picking up all of the, uh, the dust uh, from the, uh, the sanding twigs. I don't want this stuff getting uh, buried by and sealed up by the primer and then the paint, right? Like all that junk in there. We need to get off as much as we can. We, again, we want a very smooth, professional looking piece and this is how we are gonna do it. There is one more area I'm gonna demonstrate because it is hard to get at, and that is right here under the gun barrel. Between the gun barrel and the forward part of the tank, there's kind of this space, and there's a mold line that runs uh, right underneath it. I'll, I'll try to demonstrate it here, right there. See it? Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna run a modified sanding stick between the turret and the front deck. So this sanding twig, I lopped the top off uh, just to thin it out a little bit more, right? I took a, basically a third of the thickness out of it. And that's enough to sort of get under there without breaking the barrel, right? Look at that, see? So then we slowly move back and forth but I just wanted to demonstrate one of the techniques for you know, how I get under the barrel. Okay, now I have gone ahead and sanded the mold line off of every single German piece in the Axis and Allies D-Day game, and we're gonna go ahead and primer and then paint these pieces. So what I'm about to show you is the primary reason and inspiration for this video, and it's this right here. As you can see, this is just a piece of wood with a bunch of screws in it, uh, screwed in and level and organized in a pattern like that. And this is an alternative to using tape. I've seen a lot of customizations videos and I'm always a little surprised when I see folks using tape. I've used tape I think one time and realized how terrible that is to use when painting pieces or models or anything really. Tape has a high probability of ripping the uh, primer off or the paint off or both and leaving you a nasty looking plastic spot. The other part is this. This is sticky tack, you can get this at Target. Um, and this stuff that I have in my hands right now gotta be at least five or 10 years old. It's super durable, I leave it out, I don't put it in any, any kind of storage. It, it seems to just last forever and has survived repeated uses. I did my whole G40 game this way and uh, I think I've done every set that I've modified or customized with with this stuff and what we're going to do is just make a tiny little ball 
and then stick it on the end of one of these uh, posts. Then we're gonna uh, take one of our pieces and uh, set it up so that it's, it's just kind of stuck on there. And so it's, it doesn't take much to take it off. It's far less uh, sticky than a tape. There's probably a better, more technical word for it. But again, you just, it's just enough to make it hold either. You don't have to bury it in there. You just kind of got push a little bit, um, maybe give it a little twist uh, just to get it seated properly. But now when you paint it, it's just enough so that the air from the can of paint or your airbrush won't blow it off the post. But when you actually take it off, it won't peel any kind of paint from the bottom. So I'm going to start by primering the tops first, and then I'm going to flip them over and primer the bottoms. And then in, from the bottom position, we'll layer our first coat of actual paint. I'm going to use matte black. That's a rule of mine. I always keep the pieces the same color that they came in out of the box. I just try to paint them the same so the Germans look best with matte black. For now, just sticky tack on each little post and uh, I'll get the tanks set up. So I'll be right back. So we look something like this when we're finished doing that part of the process. And now I'm gonna go ahead and primer the pieces. I'm not actually gonna show this part. I'm gonna shut my phone off and move it to another room. Okay, so we've primered this rack of tanks, but uh, I'm gonna do the rest of these pieces now. That's the rest of the D-Day pieces there on the floor. And one other note while I'm doing this, I, I, I should point out that when you are able to kind of line up your pieces with a little bit of space under them, as, as opposed to against the tape that you stick them to, and when you line them up dress right, dress like this, and I can, I can hold and rotate all 12 of these pieces, you get that, those benefits, the evenness, the control, the angle. I mean, there's a lot more flexibility when you're doing this as opposed to taping your pieces on the ground or on a piece of wood or wherever. Okay, so they're all primered up. I'm gonna let them sit here and dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. We'll come back out after that and flip them all over, primer the bottoms, and then we'll move to painting them. Okay, so we flipped them upside down. So now I'm gonna add the bottom layer of primer to all of these pieces. Okay, that's done, and the next step is we're going to put a coat of paint on, and then we're going to use matte black for these pieces. So I went ahead and just did this right now. You can still see it's a little glossy, but as it dries out, it will flatten out a bit. Okay, so this is how it looks after it's dried a little bit, and now I'm going to add a layer of flat clear. Okay, now we've got the clear coat on. You, you won't be able to tell much of a difference. So now what I'm going to do is gently pull the each of these uh, pieces off and notice there's you know where it was attached it, it, it didn't stick to the sticky tack again you don't want to push like super hard and you want to be kind of careful when you pull it off and if any sti sticky tack sticks to the actual piece you can kind of gently push it back in and have the sticky tack actually pull the little bits off but th that's very very rare it's just if you see that happen if you decide to try this that's how you do it now well we're gonna have to re-knead um, the sticky tack and the reason being you can see that that uh, it caught some paint right the little sticky tack mounts caught some paint so before we flip them over I like to uh, re-knead the sticky tack okay and this will keep those little bits of paint from causing you any issue and it also will allow the sticky tack to be sticky again basically super reusable how it maintains its reusability you can see I just restick it here and then I take the piece uh, and now it's got a nice clear coat on the bottom and I'm just very lightly going to push it push it down into place I've re-kneaded all of the sticky tack and re replaced it on the posts uh, now I'm gonna lay it on matte black color these all up and normally I'd let it dry and then throw on a coat of clear and call it done and we'd have pieces that look basically identical to the uh, previous customizations video I had where I, I really didn't do anything else to the pieces after that. This is to maximize the rela relatability of the pieces so that everybody knows uh, what we're looking at. Uh, I really really do not care for putting detailed artwork and camouflage on the pieces and confusing players at tournaments or ever. 
that's a, my main reason for retaining the color, original out of the box color. But I am gonna do some dry brushing. So I'm gonna put the matte black and then I'm gonna take the pieces off. And in the next segment, I'll detail my dry brushing technique. Okay, I'm gonna dry brush this Panther tank. We'll just a little bit of paint. I use an enamel based paint as a base coat for this Panther. I'm gonna use an acrylic, which is a water based paint for the dry brush. And that's so I can kinda, you know, use Windex if I need to, or even water to rub this stuff off if I make a mistake, you know, without really worrying about whether or not I'm gonna take the base coat off because the base coat won't come off with water or Windex. Okay, and now you're essentially, um, well, you just do the technique I demonstrated. You basically dab your paintbrush in there and uh, wipe off most of it uh, on a paper towel. And uh, then you just hit the, you're looking at edges when you're doing this. And you just want to get a very little bit of paint on there. So it's very difficult to do with the camera. I usually hold the tank much closer to my face when I'm doing this. I'm about a foot away and usually I'm about <clears throat> half a foot away, but trying to demonstrate something and it, it won't look like the paint is coming on right away um, so you just keep hitting it I mean I really dry brush it I took a, like most of the paint off uh, let's try that let's try this angle You won't see it right away, but you just kind of keep hitting it. You know, the edge is a little brighter. I think this demonstration might work best. Right here, you can see sort of a couple of edges on that Panther's uh, the back half of the turret on the back quarter there. So let me just reload this. I just wipe it until I don't see paint anymore, to be honest. It's still on there, but all right, here we go. Let's back quarter of this panther tank. Usually, in my experience with other panthers of this type, um, heck, I'll do, I'll do both, both sides of the rear of the turret. You're not doing, you're not actually laying in a ton of paint. You're just highlighting the edges. That's what dry brushing is, or at least it's what it should be. It's just to accentuate the edges and make them pop out a little bit. And if you can do it without making a mess, um, yeah, that's good enough. Okay. So then I just kind of stab at the rest of this and, and brush over different parts up down left right you know just hit every angle as long as there's an edge or an angle the only area i don't really mess with is the barrel i'll try this uh let's try this rail right here you right see how that kind of pops out now and um you know, check it here. See those uh, bogey wheels? You know, did you know those were even there? Maybe not, but, uh, you know, I'm going to do, might do this away from the camera for a second. Well, that looks better, doesn't it? Uh, the last thing I'll show is the, the front treads because they're so pronounced. I think this might be a good uh, demonstration. Oh, yeah, that's good. Honestly, my opinion of this Panther was that it's a very low quality piece relative to Panthers of other versions, but look what you can do with just a little bit of time, patience, and maybe a little bit of skill. You can really beautify the piece. I mean, I paid for these pieces. I want to get the I want to get good use out of them.
I think you can kind of see and get the point. Once I'm done dry brushing this guy, I'll take him and all his brothers. Before I clear coat them, I put a decal on either side of the turret here. I'm only doing that for this version, this Axis and Allies D-Day. In the end, what we were looking for is this. Now this has been dry brushed, then had the decal applied, and then it was clear coated. And that, that piece got a little chewed up. This might not have been the best one to showcase, but this is the one that's completely done. I used this as my prototype to just check and make sure it was what I wanted before I did like mass construction on everything. This is where we started, right? Like the out-of-box piece, this shiny, crummy piece of plastic. <laughs> and look what you can do. Again, like this is so much more fun looking and I really want to play with this. You know, I want to play the board game much more now that I've got this wonderful looking piece. And, uh, you know, it started out like this and we end up like this. As this video draws to an end, I'm going to have a few photos from this project roll across the screen. I had a map printed up from a document off of axisandallies.org. All American pieces got a green wash, all British pieces got a brown wash, and I applied decals to all the air units. Once that was done, I went ahead and set it up and took these photos. The last two photos in this series are pictures of an actual game I played over the Christmas holidays. And to close this video, this was episode 5 in the clinic series, and in this video I covered three techniques to help improve your out-of-box pieces in any version of Axis and Allies. First was mold line removal. The second was a special tool that you can build to make spraying your pieces easier. And the last was how to dry brush if you decide to go that route. I hope you found this video useful or at least interesting. Thanks for watching. All the best from the good captain, and bye bye.